you're just starting out on this and you're just really working your way into doing some of these modeling uh, activities, welcome to the community. And for this video, we'll work on uh, some basic knife skills and uh, some basic paper craft skills. These uh, shipping containers uh, can be found on a uh, download on the Infinity website. We'll post a link to it and out on the forums in the community, I'll have a direct link that you can just click on and go straight to it and uh, print these out. You can build uh, these uh, shipping containers really quickly. They're inexpensive. You can build up a bunch of them real quick and before you even know it, you'll have an entire dockyard where you'll be able to uh, have running gun battles. So, starting off with, we've got the uh, printout from the PDF. This isn't standard paper. This is a heavier cardstock that I've used. Um, we'll put up a picture of the, the package. It's just a, a, a slightly heavier cardstock. And I use that rather than paper because it holds up better to the rigors of uh, dealing with uh, you know, the realities of the tabletop and how things can get battered and beaten around pretty quickly. So, have our knife, metal ruler, and uh, we'll get to some white glue in a little bit. But that's pretty much all that we need for this. So a little a little knife scale, a little care as we work on work on cutting things. Lay the ruler down, line it right up with the line. And again, this is about uh, finesse, not force. Just kind of let the weight of the knife go right down through the paper. And another line to make sure. There we are. So that's all cut through. Now if you really want, you can do your force here. Because it doesn't matter about those. Recycle that. And then go around and cut this out of the... Uh, out of the sheet. So we're going to cut around the edge here and there are the little bumps here and I, I suppose those are meant to uh, help hold this shut. I actually haven't figured out how they're supposed to work and uh, according to the uh, paper here you can do this without glue. I actually haven't figured out how to make that work either. I find that they work much better uh, with tape or glue, either one. So as far as the little curves, the little bumps on the ends, I just cut them right off. And it's much easier to do just cutting the line straight through rather than worrying about going around that particular corner. And that goes right there into the recycling bucket. is cut and more recycling so you can see that here in the secret volcano layer we're very green uh, volcano layer is really ecologically sound for world domination we get all the geothermal free heat I can run all the giant killer robots off the geothermal and the uh, the free heat rather than off any kind of nasty fission or anything like that. So now this is all cut out. So there are two different ways that you can approach this project. Um, I'm going to talk about the way that I prefer first. It's a little more labor intensive, takes a little more time, a little more care, but I think it gives a better product. And then after we get this one set up, I'll show you the alternative method, which is easier and quicker but um, I think it still yields a, an acceptable product that maybe you want to do the first couple of times as you get used to it before you move into the more finicky part that we're doing now um, but it just doesn't it it doesn't sit right with me it's not quite quite right so we'll do the uh, uh, the higher quality version first don't quite need the pen yet getting ahead of myself while I talk apparently multitasking isn't one of my great skills for the new year. So let's see, so now 
on any paper craft uh, plan, you'll see different symbols, different instructions. You want to check out the paper first to find out what the author is trying to tell you or how to do it. If you've never done a paper craft kind of project before, quite commonly you'll see like these scissors here. And that's showing you that you want to cut that line straight through. So there, 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 and there. So we'll take the ruler, lay it down on where the lines are. Now you'll see that the ruler actually lines up on two of the cut lines at the same time. And well, I could just cut, stop, and then cut again. I'm not going to do that because it's far too easy to make a mistake, to cut too deep, to accidentally cut all the way across. I prefer to do the, uh, the slow and steady method and just do the one cut there, move over to the other side, line it up again. Make the cut here, straight through like that. Flip it over. You could also do this with scissors um, just as easily. I could just be cutting in with the scissors and making this line. But depending on the scissors that you use, how sharp they are, what you've got going on, um, you can get uh, edge of cut through. The cut might might zigzag, you know, not be the straightest thing that you want. Um, in more advanced uh, paper craft, having zigzags like that will really throw off the uh, the look, the, the the end result of the project. And uh, for this, it wouldn't be so bad because you can adjust. But quite commonly, if you have to, if you make a bad scissor cut and you find out five, six steps down the line that that scissor cut is uh, not giving you a very good look, then the time that you take to have to go back in and meticulously fix all the, all the uh, bad looks, the, the hairy edges, the wavy lines, it's just not worth your time to go back and correct all that stuff halfway through when taking a little bit more time at the beginning and doing the knife cuts and taking care of it that way will save you so much hassle uh, later on. So a little investment of time, and for, some for some people, some people's opinions, uh, a little investment in tedium, but you get a better product in the end. All right, so now we've got these all cut as shown. Now we're gonna make folds. So cutting through the paper is simple enough, and actually making folds is simple too, once you know the secret to it. Secret is scoring, um, so that's just a very thin cut that doesn't go all the way through the paper. Now for everybody else out there that may be watching, thank you very much. Um, if this is too basic for you, then uh, feel free to, uh, to skip on to one of the other videos and look at something more advanced, but like I said, this is for uh, building the, building the uh, terrain for the uh, containers. I think I'm probably going to end up saying words are hard in like every video I do. Um, but we're going to work on scoring. One of the things that you can do here is the uh, shortcut way that I mentioned that we're going to do after this is you could just lay the ruler on the top, run the knife over it and make the score on the outside because then we're going to fold down. But if you do that, when you do that and you fold down, you could very well get a white line along the corner and it'll look like cut paper. And if you do it on a heavier cardstock, that'll definitely show. What we're going to do is make all the score lines on the back, fold them one way and then fold them back and we'll get a nice straight sharp line without having that white line showing where we cut it. And the way that we're going to do that and line up all the lines so we get precise cuts that match these lines is by taking our Sharpie. We've got the, the fine point to it or an ink pen, anything that you want. You want really uh, a pen that doesn't 
I've got little bits of black paint everywhere. Um, you want the fine point that will make a mark just by touching it to the paper. Not a huge mark, but you don't have to draw the pen along to get the line. So what we'll do is we'll take our, our uh, template here, our, our product, hold it up to the light so I can see through it, and then I'm just going to touch the pen to the line once there, and then once over here, and these two lines. And I've talked to you with the pen cap off for long enough. There we go. Chaos, stream of consciousness, overcoming. Oh, very common themes. There we go. Can we get that mark there? Mark another dot there. Another dot there. And this is all showing where I'm going to set up the line. I could make more dots so that I have uh, more of a, you know, multiple lines to connect when I draw it. But all you need to make a line is two points. And if you make multiple dots and some of them vary from the others, it's just going to confuse things as you move along. So I find that two dots is uh, sufficient and all you really want to do so there, there. Now I've got this marked out for each of these lines. And now mark here for the top of the side. And there, here, here, there. Boom, 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 boom. And again on the other side. And this is so simple that it just moves right along. There we are. So that takes care of all of those lines. We can set that aside for a moment. Now I'll make a I'll make a couple of score lines and then fold up a little bit so you can see. Uh, what I mean, and then go back and uh, finish up the rest so we can move on to the folding and assembling stage. So line up the, uh, <coughs> the ruler along the dots. Actually, I also have the cut lines here that I can use as a, a partial guide. Now for scoring, scoring is a little more delicate. <coughs> Pardon me. It's not Difficult, but it is delicate. Uh, where before we we cut down and we cut straight through the paper, you only really want just the weight of the knife, with a good fresh blade, a nice sharp point. Just the weight of the knife resting on the paper will cut a little score line into the paper. I'm not certain that you can see that little line there. You probably can't. I barely can. But now that I've made that little line over here. If I go to bend the paper, I get a curve. Even though it's curving along, if I actually creased that, it would be wobbly. Up here where I made the, the score line, as I go to bend it, the fibers that I cut allow me to get a much sharper, more precise line, and that'll give me a nice square line. So I'm going to flip it over like that. With the score on the inside, it allows me to get that precise line without having a cut line breaking the pigment on the outside and showing that that's where I cut it. So then we do that again for here. And just let the knife just barely run over the paper. And then you can see that line come out nice and nice and precise. That line, and even and now here, when you do, because these folded really easily, this folded really easily, because they're short areas. When you get to a longer area like this, 
I'm gonna almost do it in stages, just kind of push it down a little bit and just let the paper gently decide that it wants to go where you want it to go. And just easy, once you've got it all down, then you can kind of run your fingers back and forth over it, flatten it out more. Bring it back around the other way, because this is actually the way that we want it to go. Like that. So there. So then with these two folded over, you can start to see it take shape. And now, let's finish up the rest of the score lines. And we'll get this folded up. So one there. And then this big one here. Line up all the dots. Don't be afraid to take your time. If it seems like it's taking you forever just to make a little decision about where to put the ruler and you want to do it, you know, reset and retry, put the, uh, pick the ruler up, put it back down and line up the lines better. Go ahead and do that. The little extra time that you spend now give you a better product and it'll save you all the time of needing to redo it in case your uh, initial instincts were correct and uh, it was in the wrong place. When you first looked at it. So there, we've got those all set. Those all set. We need to make two more cuts, two more scores. It's a high scoring game. So there. And then this one. Get that all lined up. Your friends can tell you that you're being overly precise or that you have some sort of compulsion with order or something like that and let them, that's fine. When you show them a uh, beautiful board made up of your inexpensive and handmade uh, terrain, they can say whatever they want. Your gear will still be better than theirs if they go through and they just sloppily slapdash things together. All right now that we've got all of our uh, cuts and folds made, now we can start to actually glue this together. So we'll get out our white glue, our little piece of plastic that we use for a glue palette. Put the glue there. So now we'll take these long tabs here. We'll fold them in first, so they go like that. A little bit of glue on the finger. Rub it along that edge. This is the one that's going to go on the inside. This is the one that's on the outside. And then just put them down like that. And that begins to build. Move to the other side. This will be the inside one. This will be the outside one. Wipe that all off. Get that started and now take a little glue, put the glue along this line here and that'll come up here and that ensures that the glue lands where the paper curve is going to be. So I don't have to worry about planning out 
where do I want to put the glue, where is that going to land, what's going to happen. Put it there on the paper, and it all falls together naturally. And on the other side. Or, I'm going to show you, it works just as well either way. You can experiment with, instead of putting the glue along here, put the glue along up here. Just like that. Rub the uh, excess off for a moment here so that I don't get glue all over the outside of the box. Pull that up and hold that. White glue, PVA, is uh, not the fastest drying glue in the world, but on a bit of paper, rub down thinly enough, it will hold, finishes and holds pretty quickly, quickly enough that you can do this this fast. If you have little spots, let's say here, you can see that it's bowing back out and it's leaving gaps. You do have some time where you can slowly, very carefully, open it back up like that because the glue does in fact not dry immediately and put more glue on if that's what you want to do. Then. Make sure that it folds up all the way. Work on some real glue droplets here that are trying to mess everything up. You can close it back up, lay it down on the table, and then hold it down like that to make sure that you get good pressure on the corners and that everything is all pressed in and glued in. Slide your finger in and back along the line to get that all sewed. And have tighter corners. You can see the difference between that corner where we glued this side and this one where we just glued along the top. Next, so almost there, we'll take these and you can fold them down to here and you can see that you've got a little kind of springiness and it's going to want to pop up like that. So just take it Push the flap all the way into the box, all the way down to there, so I've closed it all the way along the wall. Pull it back out. Do the same thing to the other side. Now you want to be careful when you go to do this, because you've got those two other pieces in there. If you go to press down too hard, you can see that that's hitting it. It doesn't want to uh, fold in all the way. And push inside, kind of hold everything in so that it will go down in like that. Hold that back up. So now these flaps are more willing to stay flatter, willing to behave and give you a more box-like shipping container kind of look. So we'll finish off with the last glue. Uh, yeah, we'll have this one here on the inside, the glue right along the edge, this one on the outside, glue right along this edge. And pop those down. And now instead of holding them with your fingers, and that could be, you know, too shallow or too deep, because you're not sure where the, uh, it's not easy to eyeball where the, uh, the top is going to be, or bottom in this case, you just flip it over and then set it like that. Hold it there. If it's got a little spring in it, push it down. That'll let the glue move, shift around as needed. And then once the glue sets, you'll have a good flat bottom. And there it is your first paper craft project finished and a nice shipping container. So we can grab any of the uh, 
any of our little rooftop snipers that need to jump through, take care of different stuff. Jump across here, come around the corner, and you can make several of these really quickly, and before you know it, we'll have an entire dockyard that you can have running gun battles in. So let's look at that shortcut method that I mentioned. So we have another one. This time, instead of marking out the dots on the back and doing it all that way, we'll do all the cuts along the lines on the top. So, make the first cut here. That's all set. Make the top cut here. Here we are. That. So we've got those two cut. Actually, that one needs cut all the way through. That's why. Again. See, I got sloppy. I went for the one hard cut. The one hard cut doesn't work, and sometimes it doesn't. Then you got to go back and meticulously line stuff up. If I had just taken the time to do two or three gentle cuts, then I wouldn't have been surprised by that, and I wouldn't have had to have gone back and lined the line up again, taking the chance that I didn't have it in the right place, that I was going to make a second line and that things would just go downhill. All right, so now we'll do the scoring on the printed side rather than the blank side like we did before. So now when I go to bend this, I'm not sure, can you see there where I made the, the cut line, the fold, I've cut through the blue ink where the ink has, has gone into the paper and it's revealed some of the white fibers inside. So that makes that white line along there. We'll do it again here on the longer line where you may be able to see it better. this down. Now on this one, you can definitely see it as you go to fold the paper, you can see, or maybe you can't, it's awful dark out here in the, uh, in the secret volcano lair, miles beneath the earth's crust, and uh, see the white line that comes out there. Now rather than going through the whole thing and watching me do that all over again, I have one here that I did with the cut on the outside of the, uh, the paper line and here in the studio it's easier for me to see the white line that goes along here. I'm not sure how well you can see that if the lighting holding it here in the light helps you see it better or up here near the camera helps you see that line better. Uh, but personally, I think it, it is still a perfectly functional product, but I think it's a slightly inferior product. It does give it square lines. This one does have sharper, more 90 degree lines than this one does. Um, but the white line throws it off for me. Either way, I suppose it's a matter of uh, uh, personal taste. Uh, let me know what you think of it down in the uh, in the comments. Uh, if you've tried any of these, or if you enjoy these, or if there are other products that you've found, paper craft products uh, that you can get for free, downloads, and then print off. If you'd like me to take a look at those, uh, hit me up in the uh, in the forums on the community. Give me a link to those uh, those paper paper craft uh, projects, and we'll take a look at them. Uh, so for right now, I guess. Uh, that's that. We've got the first knife skills down. We've got a little bit of gluing done. And check us out. Here's the form uh, address here. www.spectrestudios, all one word, .us. 
and I will talk to you later. Comms out. <laughs>